not too shabby. How to run faster the long run that is what we're talking about today oh baby 20 miles in the bank 32 kilometers I'll get you the pace and the splits back at the studio and uh, tip of the day you want to enter recovery mode immediately after the long run like start getting the nutrition back in you um, it's that 30 minute window <coughs> 30 minute window right uh, right when you stop running, that you want to start hammering the food, hammering the drink, uh, just getting that good nutrition back into you, and stretching, of course, foam rolling, all that good stuff. So that's what I'm doing right now. Oh, baby, 20 miles, 20 miles. Dance it out. Dance that long run out. That's right. Keep those legs limber and moving. Come on now. I'm not afraid of the cucumber. I'm not afraid of the cucumber. Cheers, YouTube family. And we are back in the studio. Thank you, Dave, for sending those shoes. They'll be great for the next giveaway. Appreciate it. And what do I have in my hands here? The Solomon socks that were sent to me. Uh, one of the pairs, I think four pairs were sent. So probably Sunday or Monday, I'll get you my thoughts on the Solomon sock lineup. And real quick, the Audios 4 is a little bit of a mistake wearing them today. Why? I didn't realize how many pebbles were going to be on that road today. I thought it was a smoother surface, so I could definitely feel some rocks. I Listen, this is definitely a road shoe. I'm trying to put it through about 50 miles before giving you the full review, so I wanted to take them out today, and <laughs> they're definitely not a dirt road shoe. I would just, just bypass it. Just putting that out there right now. Okay, moving on. How to run faster. The long run. It is no secret that the long run is a key ingredient uh, the, this day and age, it is no secret that the long run is a key ingredient for getting faster, for running fast over long distances. It just, even if you just think about it logically, it just makes a lot of sense. But I'm going to dive in now to actually a throwback clip from about a month ago. I made a vlo another vlog a month ago. It was titled, 
how to run faster, uh, build your aerobic engine first. So I dive really into the science behind building our aerobic engine, and I think I, I went back and listened to it today. I think I actually did a pretty good job explaining the science behind why you want to do a long run. So instead of just repeating myself, we're just gonna do a little throwback. <laughs> Seth, take it away. Therefore, the other option, and this is how I train, is focus the first two, even three months of training leading up to a peak race on aerobic development, meaning where we're not going into oxygen debt. We're, we're approaching oxygen debt, but we're not pushing through. Does that make sense? And so by focusing on aerobic training, not anaerobic training, and that another way to phrase it and you hear it in the running world is long, slow distance or LSD runs, you know, kind of like your traditional long run. Uh, what happens is we're working on the cardiac efficiency of our hearts. So our hearts, believe it or not, you know, it can expand and get bigger with more training and that can impact uh, basically the power of the contraction of the heart, which means you can pump more blood into your system, your, I guess, your pulmonary system. And that allows us to carry more oxygen, or sorry, more blood through our bloodstream and therefore more oxygen. In addition to this cardiac efficiency, which we can improve through steady state running, meaning mile after mile, nice and steady, uh, not plunging our pH levels down with surges, just steady. It's preferably for two hours. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, in addition to that, there's this pulmonary ventilation. And again, bear with me on the science, but from what I understand, when we go at this aerobic level, uh, at a steady state, for two hours and above, and this two hour mark is fascinating to me, like why is it this two hour mark? But study after study has proven that running for two hours and above, uh, really begin. that's when we really begin to see the changes in our aerobic systems. Uh, and so on a scientific level, uh, there's capillary beds in our lungs that begin to develop at this two hour mark. And so the air from the outside is breathed into our lungs, uh, into these newly developed capillary beds, and then into our heart, into the bloodstream, and delivered to our muscles. And that's what we want as runners, right? We want as much, as much oxygen as possible being delivered to our muscles as possible. Ah! And so how does the long run actually make us faster? As already mentioned in the previous vlog about how to build our aerobic engine, we're getting ready to get ready. We do the aerobic base first so that we can do the anaerobic base second so that we can then go race as fast as possible, okay? So it's all about that stepping stone along the path to race day. So the long run is building up our endurance, our stamina, it goes without saying, I'm not gonna repeat the science, you already just heard it, uh, but also muscle fatigue. I must say, usually around mile 17 to 18, I really start to feel a little bit of muscle fatigue, and that was, today was awesome. So I used that You Can Energy Drink, you saw me mixing it there at the beginning of the vlog, and I must say, it felt pretty good, like my legs, I, I was feeling tired, but I pushed through that pain threshold pretty well. Uh, even though my muscle fatigue was setting in. And guess what? In a race, you're gonna have muscle fatigue. Now, a 5K, it's a little different. 10K, I would say, yes, absolutely. Half marathon, marathon for sure. And so what we're doing is we're developing our body's ability to, to respond, especially, I'll just put it out there, mentally to the muscle fatigue, meaning you got it. You, it's like sometimes I, I I know it's crazy, and I don't know all the psychology behind it, but mind over matter. Like you have to almost block out some of that pain and just keep putting one foot in front of the other. It's crazy. So muscle fatigue, stamina, and endurance. Okay, and now I have on my phone here just a few. Uh, tips that I want to share about what I do on my long runs. All right, tip number one, long runs should be a steady pace. You don't want to be going too fast. You don't want to be going too slow. Steady pace. Tip number two, you want to know your pace that you want to shoot for ahead of time, whether it's seven minute pace, nine minute pace, 10 minute pace, whatever your pace is that you're shooting for. But 
don't be afraid to have a 10 to 15 percent uh, flexibility on that pace depending on how your legs are feeling today I went a little bit faster uh, just going off a of feel I was anticipating about 715 pace it ended up being about seven minute per mile pace for that 20 miles so that's good just going by feel going by feel tip number three I always use the first one one and a half miles sometimes two if I'm really tired or sore but first one to one and a half miles basically as a warm-up just waking those legs up kind of throwing the pace a little bit out the window just just easing into it ease waking it up and then by about mile two it's like okay I found my pace lock it in tip number four nutrition and liquid I took one gel and then drank almost both of those water bottles that I was holding today and using that you can powder which we'll talk about in a separate video and uh, I almost went through both bottles so yeah it's important and just an idea if you don't have a vest you can stash bottles along the route or simply just do a loop over and over again and like do a figure eight and just make sure you have one location where you have whether it's your car whether it's your house your apartment and just come back and get it get a good drink and then go back out again go back out again so really important to hydrate and have a little bit of nutrition I would say for anything especially over half marathon tip number five know your route ahead of time sometimes I'll just go out I'll be honest sometimes I just go out and I don't care where I just make up the route as I'm running but when you really want to hone into a pace uh, when you're really I would say uh, narrowing down for a race and getting specific for a race I think it helps to know the route ahead of time basically to eliminate any mental I don't want to say stress but yeah a mental distraction about oh gosh where am I running today? Am I going to get lost? I don't know what the miles are. I don't know if there's big hills on this route, etc. So that's the, that's another tip number five. Know your route ahead of time. Tip number six. I love this one. This is the mental game. Mental game. I did 20 miles today. The last two miles, I believe, were my fastest miles. I always like to, as we used to say in college, tighten the screws a little bit tighten the screws a little bit just a little bit not much I went from about 645 pace to 625 pace just to basically you know what it is basically and I know this sounds weird basically to tell my legs I'm in charge you're not in charge I'm in charge why on race day in a marathon in a half marathon any distance really I want to be in charge of basically telling my body no you hurt I hurt we're going I don't care what you say so that's my thesis behind the last two miles the last 10% uh, yeah roughly 10% of a long run 8% of a long run just tighten those screws a little bit just drop the pace down if you can just to make sure it's like you're in charge of this workout and the seventh and final tip aspire for that two hour threshold if you can get to that two hours you can kind of throw distance out the window a little bit just get to that two hour threshold at some point it might take you years seriously it might take you years to work up to that but they've done studies way back in the 70s I think there was one done maybe around like 2004 approximately where basically something starts happening with our capillary beds inside of us after two hours where we really start to get that full benefit of the aerobic uh, aerobic stimulus so anyway that's a last tip okay and yes the key word is actually a number it's gonna be two because I really really believe in that two hour threshold for the long run oh man I know I just threw a lot at you I hope that made sense and the question of the day do you incorporate a long run into your training uh, schedule and if you do have you do you think it's helping have you seen a benefit from it if so maybe give us a few examples of how you think it's helping you that'd be amazing and I'll be curious to hear like even if you're getting ready for a 5k I'm gonna make the argument and say you really need a good long run in your training schedule I'll be fascinated to hear like 5k perspectives and marathon perspectives on this Woo! what a day oh man what a day seek beauty work hard and love each other adios